happening, right? There are a lot of... Hey, you heard him say it. Wow. <clears throat> so basically, West Africa is home to African-Americans and then East Africa and the rest of Africa is more like uh, cousins or neighbors or something. Relatives yeah. from a extended family is what he's trying to say. Mm. So guys, what do you think about that? Do you believe what he's saying? Let me just say this real quick before I, uh, I pass the mic. Um, when he was talking about somebody coming home, he's saying that African-Americans are coming home to Nigeria, mm -hmm. but they're not being vocal about it like you see in the other places like Ghana and Gambia. And they're doing the work. That's what he was leading into when you when you that, play that clip. Okay. He's talking about he's, he's, he, he, he just came back from Nigeria and he saw a lot of African-Americans from D.C. in Nigeria and they are there building in Nigeria and they're not publicizing it. That's what he said. Okay. Initially, yeah. What's going on, everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. And today's video is going to be a response to the King Gonda's uh, podcast, basically responding to something I said when I said West Africa, basically Nigeria, is where Africa, if you really want to go home, 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 that's where, you know, we should, you know, think about going, you know, as far as you know, at, on mass compared to like the East African countries right uh, i said we should go to the west and central african countries and as i watched the video you know and i noticed there's a panel full of mostly east africans and you know they may have felt i felt you know and all, all of them are excellent all of them are excellent smart intelligent individuals and i wanted to be this is an adult conversation i just want to clear some things up because i heard some things that they said that i didn't agree with and they didn't agree with me because maybe they weren't really understanding what I was trying to say. Maybe they, they probably have to watch my whole video to understand, but maybe they can't understand, right? And I think the fact that they can't understand, really, truly, and honestly, they can't understand is the reason why I said we need to go, as African Americans, we need to go to Africa. Now, I'm going to address some of the things that, issues that they have, not all, but some of the issues that they had. Uh, my man O'Shea, he did mention there were some countries that I didn't mention that I probably should have mentioned. The reason why I didn't mention those countries is because I was speaking off the top of my head. And because of that, I didn't name all the countries that we are from on the West West Africa, pretty much the whole of West Africa. So if there are some West African countries that I missed, you know, I apologize, but I'm really talking about all of West Africa, right? So that's one, that's one issue O'Shea had with me was I didn't mention various countries that really 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 will probably need our you know our participation in, in the economy more than nigeria and there are still our people when we go there we will see ourselves right and so that that's one issue i just simply just didn't say the country i didn't say i didn't name all the countries that, that's just i just didn't do it because i was speaking you know straight you know from my head that's one uh another issue was one of his guests uh, i'm horrible with names but um the the gentleman you know, he didn't really agree with, you know, you know, they all kind of had the same sentiment that Africa as a whole is home, which is 100% true. That's why I tried in my previous year to be as nice. I tried to say it as nice as humanly possible, because sometimes us black folks, we, we have as human beings, we have this small our egos, which is necessary for us to operate. But egos and I, I am guilty of the same thing. So I'm not saying anything that I wouldn't do. This is a panel full of East Africans listening to a guy say that West Africa is the where you really need to go. Now, I do understand there were some, some slaves, oh, sorry, you know what, sorry, some Africans who were taken into slavery, you know, from the East Side. I do, I'm fully aware, I'm fully aware of that. I am a historian, you know, so I do, I know how I have, I know how it went down, right? And I'm also fully aware, and I say in my videos all the time, African people weren't stagnant, right? African people moved about the continent like we move about the world. We move about, right? And I've always made it a made it a a point to say that when you go to Nigeria, you see all of Africa in Nigeria, right? You're talking about the Fertile Crescent. If you go to Nigeria, the people in Nigeria, the people in Nigeria, they they represent pretty much every type of African, right? And one thing the, uh, the gentleman said, he said something, he don't see the culture of the Nigerian and the, you know, how is it that an African-American can still maintain an African culture outside of Africa after being gone for two, 300, 300 years? Well, 
in fact, we have maintained a lot of our culture that is specifically Nigerian. That is, well, as we call it now, that's specifically Yoruba. You can see the us African Americans, along with the African diaspora, holding on to our, our traditional cultures all throughout Western, the Western Hemisphere. From Brazil to Cuba to Trinidad to, to the southern portion of America, to African Americans who everything that African Americans do, our mannerisms, the way our family structure, because he said he don't see that. Well, maybe it's because he's East African. It's possible that could be it. He can't see the correlation because he's neither one of those groups, right? He's a Ugandan, right? But he's, I think, but he lives in America. I don't see how he wouldn't see it because he's a, Af he's, he's a, all of effective purposes, an African American or an African who lived in America long enough to understand the culture. But maybe he just didn't see the correlation. But in fact, from the very foods that we African Americans eat traditionally in our families are Nigerian foods. It's Igbo and Yoruba foods. We make our, the foods that are significant in, in West Africa are the same foods that are significant with African Americans. The only thing is, us African Americans, we don't know. We can't put two and two together. We have not been able to put two and two together first to correlate our African American heritage and the traditions that we practice, right, with African tradition, with, with the things that's, that's rooted in West African culture. Like, we have things called root work and various other terms that 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 we use within our culture root work right for instance root work is almost like a holistic uh natural way of healing with some, some spirituality and various and it's very similar to the to the works done by the yoruba by the yoruba and the Igbos and the various other tribes within the areas that we we call west africa right when it comes to healing and it it works you know it, it, it works you know you know we just it's something that we do you know, so when he said that he doesn't see the correlation, I just take it, he just, he's not putting two and two together, right? We see him as a Ugandan, I've seen him on another show, right? And one of his inspirations for going back to Uganda was, you know, he's always, he's been back and forth, but he, he went where his roots were, right? And he established himself in a place that's home to him, that's familiar to him, right? And he loves it there, right? See, that's something that African Americans we're trying to not all of us like 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 some on the panel said everybody doesn't travel to Af every black person is not going to travel to africa to reconnect with their roots everybody's not going to travel to africa to reconnect with their family and kumbaya and but some people literally just want to find a better location with better opportunities period and it just so happens africa is the place to be because it's, it's easier to do than it is on the western hemisphere they just happen to be black that's true some people need a certain level of infrastructure to live safe and comfortably and they're going to pick countries that have that infrastructure no doubt right and is east, does east africa do a better job at uh, at, uh, at with infrastructure do they do a better job with resources to make it so that african americans can operate you know in those countries you know efficiently yes without a doubt all right without a doubt but my argument is well if africa has an issue right and it's going to take the people who's from that place it's going to take the people from that place to fix it we can't the outside is not going to do it we have to do it so what that means is continental africans right need to go you know nigerians who leave and go off and have one two three generations it requires them to go back and, and take all the intellectual knowledge that they've learned all the leverages that they've gained to come back to their original country country and build right to make it so that it can compete you know in the african market far as inf with infrastructure and things like that right it's also going to take its diaspora that was taken involuntarily right with all the knowledge that we have over this 200 200 plus years to go back to our original home now i'm not saying african americans or african caribbeans who are mostly from that western portion i, I just call nigeria for west for for, for argument's sake that that part is not not saying that we should just go there and not invest in the rest of africa I think we should invest in every part of Africa. I think we should go to where the opportunities align. But there are people who truly and who truly want to reconnect with their ancestral land, right? Which a lot of us, right, when we do our DNA, we find out that our ancestral land is the area of Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Cameroon. At one point, Cameroon was part of what we would consider Nigeria. The problem is these these artificial lines that the Europeans created 
forces us to say these country words instead of regions or areas, right? So that's why I have to say Nigeria. But when I say Nigeria, I'm still talking about Cameroon. I'm still talking about Togo and Benin. I'm talking about all of that, right? The Ni Ni uh, the Niger, Niger, the um, Niger. I'm talking about um, I'm talking about Ghana. I'm talking about what is it? I think Ghana yeah. and Sierra. What was it? Ghana and another country. What was it? Don't get me messing up. Was it Sierra Leone or Ghana? I forgot. But either way, a lot of these countries on the borders, the tribes and the kingdoms. They're, they're one and the same. The borders cut us in pieces, right? But I happen to know that if African Americans, you see the difference between a Ugandan, an expat Ugandan who lived in America and go back to Uganda, the difference between these East Africans and, you know, and the way they think, based uh, the difference between that and the way we think, or some of us think, is that you see that was something we stripped from us. See, you can say you're from Uganda. You know your ancestry is from Uganda, right? But you are an African and you can enjoy and commemorate and, and bond with your African brothers and sisters on the continent with the basis of your you being Ugandan, right? I'm an African-American. I can base myself off that, but you know, which I do. But at the same time, there's another foundation in which I need to reconnect, which is Nigeria, right? I understand that by reconnecting with Nigeria, that is the baseboard to reconnect to every portion of Africa. I recognize that by basing in Nigeria and learning the, the culture and the traditions at which we were snatched from specifically from that point I understand that those also those cultures and traditions are pieces of other various African cultures and traditions and people groups throughout Africa I'm fully aware of that African Americans need to reconnect directly certain the ones who are on the same mission as me the ones who doesn't don't mind going into a country that's hard you know, hard to operate in because America is hard to operate. If you can operate in America, you can operate anywhere in Africa, right? If you are a business-minded person, you can figure it out, right? Time and money, time, money, patience, and having the ability to roll with the punches, right? So that's one thing. That's specifically what my video was about. About people who really truly want to reconnect with that thing that was snatched away from their ancestors, right? So that's one. Uh, the the other lady, she was on there. She didn't have much to say. You know, I understand. Maybe she didn't have much to say. The host, the very, very, very beautiful host, right? Very, very, very intelligent, beautiful host. She felt like I was being somewhat divisive. Well, or she didn't like that. And I understand that. And I, it's not my intentions to create any type of divisiveness, right? And I can understand from her perspective why or how that would sound divisive. divisive because it sounds like I'm trying to cater East Coast west coast thing right which that's not what i'm trying to do what i want african americans to do is understand know and recognize where they are from specifically home base right and another thing she she made a good point she made a very good point she said even if you go home you know you go to a place they may not like you or accept you well let me just allow the beautiful intelligent sisters to know let me just explain to her that the ancestral homeland of African Americans, which is Nigeria, I can tell you with 100% confidence that the Nigerian people as a whole 100% accepts African Americans and African Caribbeans and African Latinos. They 100% accept us and they also know that we are their children. They know we are their direct brothers and sisters. There is a slave port in Nigeria. It's a, it needs to be invested, and that's one of the problems of Western Africa. They don't invest in the things that they should invest. That could bring them money, and it also can bring them, it, it will allow people to be educated on what happened, right? Just like Ghana has slave ports, Nigeria does, but Ghana advertises them a lot better than Nigeria. And Nigeria doesn't put the money in, you know, that Ghana does when it comes to their historical um, uh, um, relics and, you know, sites and whatnot. But... Nigerians are fully aware that the people that's called African-American belong to them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They know that. Like, we literally belong to, to them. They know that. They're just trying to get us to know that. And, and it's time for us to realize that we belong to these people. We belong to Ghana. We belong to Togo. We belong to Benin. We belong to the Congo. We belong to Sierra Leone. We belong to the Ivory Coast. We belong to Liberia. We belong to these people. We belong to them. You understand? They know this now. They didn't. They, some people weren't the full. Everybody wasn't fully aware. But now we're in the age of information where all the information, 
all the records are there for all of us to be seen. They know that now. And they're like, you know, the majority of the people are like, come on home. Nigerians are telling African Americans to come on home, right? Now, the rest of the con continent is also telling us to come on home, right? And they're doing a better job at telling us to come on home. But make no mistake, you know, Nigeria and the West Coast, they they know who we are and they want their children to come home. For all terms and purposes, every one of us got family over there, direct family. And I actually have, through my DNA, direct family from Ghana, literally, Ghana. They never been over here. They did, they just happened to do their DNA. And I found my direct family member from Ghana, which is 45 minutes away from the state of Akiti, Nigeria, a 45 minute flight away from Akiti State, Nigeria, where I, um, where I set up camp and built my house. And then I'm aware, now I came aware that in Akiti State, Nigeria, before it was a state or before it was his own, I guess before it separated from the, um, the bigger state of, I think it Oyo, there was a war between Nigeria and Ghana where the people of Akiti actually went, walked from Akiti to Nigeria to fight this war, right? So the Nigerians from Akiti, the way I set up, went to Ghana and fought this war. And a lot of people from Ghana actually made their way back. They're captured from the war. They, they came back to live in the state of Akiti, right? They were considered, they will be called slaves, right? Or, we, or back then they would be indigenous servants served servants they were actually loved by the community i'm talking about the ghanan ghananian warriors that were captured by the akiti warriors they were brought to akiti right it is now that's now located in nigeria where i set up state the story is because i asked all these people i asked you know the people there i always asked about the history and there are people from that from ghana that lived there that have been there since the war and they're loved they got married they had a bunch of children they were celebrated and when they passed away they had big big huge funeral for these people to celebrate their life right just like in, in, in Nigeria, there are people from various other different parts of Africa that come for various reasons, that come to Nigeria, the Fertile Crescent. I keep on saying that because there's opportunity there. And they live in peace and harmony with the people there. So when I saw all this stuff, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm keeping it all in context, right? All of this in my global world Pan-African context. I think that African Americans should concentrate on West Africa. Let me start saying just... West Africa established a route and then take those branches and should start reaching out to the other parts in Africa, making those bridges of connection of social and economic cooperation. But I definitely don't hate on the East. The East Coast of Africa is beautiful. The people are beautiful. The people are wonderful. You guys are amazing. And I'm glad I, I'm actually glad to see um, us going there. I'm glad that we are just going every every part. There's no part of Africa that that we shouldn't go invest in commune with our brothers and sisters there's no part i'm simply saying as a d as west africans by dna by ancestry we should reconnect and try our best to know who we were before the europeans stole it from us now that we have the opportunity to get it back there's no excuses that's all i don't know who i am I, all that's bull crap that i don't know who i am i don't know where i'm from i don't know all that is no longer an excuse now there are mechanisms as technology to find that, find that out for, and the, the, the barrier to finding that out is very low. A couple hundred dollars and a little bit of research, you can find out pretty much all that. You can find out just as much information about where you're from as a European American who, who can find out about where they're from in Europe. We have the, it's, it's equal now. It's totally, we can all find out, all right? So I just wanted to clarify and, and kind of just tackle some of their questions. O'Shea did make some good points uh, about East Africa. Like I said, being fine, it's easier to operate in East Africa. It is. That's just true. Everything O'Shea said was true. Everything he said was correct. But in order for those things to check, in order for those things to change, it's going to take the collective effort of the continent, continental Africans on, on the West Coast and the diaspora via the unvolunteered immigrants and the voluntary immigrants to come back and bring all their intellectual knowledge, all their experience to the West African countries and improve it on our own. Because if we if we wait for anybody else to do it, they're not gonna do it. We have to do it on our own. So I'm of the I'm of the the tra traveling vein. I'm not a tour guy. I don't take tour guides. I'm not a commercial traveler. I don't travel and go to commercial places. I don't go through the commercial farm. You know, take me to this. 
museum, take me to this restaurant, take me to this designated spot, put me back on the plane and send me home after taking all my money. That's not me. I'm a real traveler. All right. So I'm talking about real travelers who take real risks and who want to do real business in somewhat sometimes a hostile environment. And when I say hostile, I mean maybe economically hostile, not like physically hostile, because it, it, you'll be pretty you'll be pretty safe in Africa. You know, most places you go. So that's just not you're safer in Africa than you are here in America. I'll tell you that right now. But anyway, I just wanted to make a video to respond to the panel on King Gondis channel. Uh, who, you know, I saw their faces. I was looking at them. Uh, I wish I was there. I wish I was there to explain myself in better detail, you know, because I didn't want them to feel the way they were feeling. Some of them were feeling the way they were feeling. And I wanted them to understand me in more in co uh, with more context than that. But anyway, I hope this clarified things. I hope you understand why I want African Americans to concentrate on West, how I would prefer, and it's just me, my opinion. Like the guy said, just my own opinion. Who am I? I'm just a dude on the internet, right? But anyway, that's all I got to say. This Afro think tank, learn something, cheat something. I'm out.